The Hagi Pax track by his stick is given an initial speed of 20 meters per second on a frozen pond. The puck remains on the ice and slides 120 meters, slowing down steadily until it comes to rest. Determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the ice. Friction force, or simply F sub R, is the force caused by the interaction of two objects rubbing each other. Rubbing each other, this force always opposite to the applied force. So from our previous lecture videos, sa lahat ng problems na encounter natin, we assume that all the surfaces are smooth and that objects slide without resistance to their motion. But take note that no surface is perfectly smooth, however. Kung titignan natin yung atomic level, for example, in this figure, even the smoothest surface is actually rough and jag. To slide one such surface across another requires a force large enough to overcome the roughness such as in this figure. So this is the origin of the force we call as the friction or simply in other terms, the frictional force. Since yung friction is caused by the random microscopic irregularities of a surface, yun yung maliliit na lubak-lubak sa surface na hindi na natin nakikita. And since, and since it is uh, greatly affected by other factors such as the presence of lubricants, there is no simple law of nature for friction. There are, however, some very useful rules of thumb na nagbibigay or nagpo-provide ng accurate results for, for calculating frictional forces. In what follows, describe natin yung rules of thumb na yun for the two most common types of friction. First is yung static friction and second is what we call the kinetic friction. Static friction, or dinedenote natin siya as the mu sub s, provides a frictional force that keeps a stationary object at rest. Kapag naka-encounter na tayo ng problem na meron ng friction, gagamitin natin yung static friction kapag yung object na consider natin or inoobserve natin is at rest. So this is the formula for the static friction. Force of friction is equal to mu sub s times mu sub s or the coefficient of friction na tinatawag natin times the normal force. On the other hand, kinetic friction naman or mu sub k, yun yung kanyang coefficient of kinetic friction, provides the amount of retarding force between two objects that are moving relative to each other. As its name implies, yung kinetic friction is the friction produced when surfaces slide against one another. This is the formula naman for the kinetic friction. Pareho lang sila ng formula from static friction. The difference is yung concept nila or yung principle. Sa static friction again, gagamitin natin siya kapag yung object is at rest. Kapag yung kinetic friction naman, nagkaroon na ng motion. For example, we have an object here. And nandito siya sa surface. Kung magkakaroon tayo ng applied force dito, say FA, and itutulak niya yung box na yan, magkakaroon ng retarding force by third law of motion. And nandito sa part na to, yung tinatawag nga natin na force of friction na kinokontra niya yung applied force. Palagi, yung force of friction natin, yung frictional force na yan, ay nakikita dun sa surfaces. Dun natin nilalagay. So there are three rules of thumb for kinetic friction. The first of kinetic friction between two surfaces is number one, proportional dun sa magnitude of the normal force. Kaya nga, gagamitin natin itong formulas na to. Same with the static friction. Number two, independent of the relative speed of the surfaces. Number three, independent of the area of contact between the surfaces. Hindi natin papansinin kung gaano kalaki yung area of contact niya. Basta, we will just use this formula. Example number one, a crate with a mass of 9.5 kilograms rests on a horizontal floor. The coefficient of static friction and kinetic friction are 0.38 and 0.31 respectively. Find the frictional force and the acceleration acting on the crate if a horizontal applied force is exerted on it of magnitude letter A, 0 newton, letter B, 15 newton, letter C, 35 newton, and letter D, 55 newton. We draw first the free body diagram, considering this is the crate. Ilalagin natin yung forces na nag-aak sa kanya. We have the weight and yung normal force, of course, F sub N. 
And merong nag-a-act na applied force. For example, nandito yung applied force na yan, horizontal applied force, F sub A. By third law of motion, may mag a sa kanya na frictional force. Unang-una, hindi smooth na yung ating problem dito. We have given a coefficient of static and kinetic friction. Yung frictional force na yan is pa-contra dun sa applied force, which is nandito sa part na to. This is force of friction. So, this is now the free body diagram. This is the normal force. This is the weight. This is the force of friction. And this is the force applied. So, in this problem, we are asked to find the frictional force and the acceleration na nag act dun sa grate. And for that, to solve for the frictional force, kailangan alam na muna natin yung normal force. We have to solve first for the normal force by second law of motion at y. We have mass times acceleration. Wala tayong motion sa vertical component kasi hindi naman nagkaroon ng acceleration pataas or pababa. So, this is zero. And by summation of forces at y, say again, this is the positive up and right. Positive F sub N minus weight. So, this is zero. Fn is directly equal to the weight, which is equal to mass times the gravity. We have 9.5 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second square. Normal force is equal to 93.20 newton. For letter A, to solve for the frictional force, i-assume muna natin na hindi pa nagmo-move yung crate. Therefore, sa frictional force, Hindi pa ito yung final frictional force ang magiging answer natin. This is just the frictional force caused by the static friction. And dahil hindi pa nga gumagalaw, wala pang motion, static friction muna ang gagamitin natin. So we have given a static friction coefficient of 0.38 times the normal force, 93.2 Newton. Force of friction by static is 35.42 Newton. For letter A, ang applied force natin is 0 Newton. Mas malaki yung frictional force by static. Ibig sabihin, hindi nga gagalaw yung ating rate. It will not move. Therefore, the acceleration is 0. There is no acceleration. To solve for the final force of friction, by second law of motion, again, dahil walang acceleration, there is no motion. This is zero. And by summation of forces at x component, force of friction, positive, minus the force applied. This is zero. And this is also zero. Force of friction is zero newton. This is for letter A. For letter B naman, same process ang gagawin natin. Gagamitin pa rin natin itong force of friction by static na nakuha natin and i-compare pa rin natin sa force applied. Ang force of friction natin dito is 35.42 newton pa din. Kaya lang, mas malaki pa rin siya sa force applied which is 15 newton. Big sabihin, wala pa rin movement yung crater, wala pa rin motion. Therefore, the acceleration is still zero. And again, to solve for the force of friction, summation of forces at x ulit, dahil by second law of motion, zero pa, din, zero pa din yung ating net force. And this is force of friction minus force applied. Force of friction is equal to, force applied natin is 15 newton. For letter C, we will compare ulit yung ating force of friction na 35.42 newton ang given sa atin naman na force applied for letter C is 35 newton big sabihin mas malaki pa rin yung force of friction by static sa force applied natin which is 35 newton wala pa rin tayong motion then therefore the acceleration is still zero and same process summation of forces at x no acceleration, no motion zero yung ating net force Zero na to. Force of friction minus force applied na 35 newton. Force of friction natin is now equal to 35 newton. For letter D, 
Ang force of light na given na sa atin is 55 Newton. And ang force of friction by static kanina is equal to 35.42 Newton. In this case, mas malaki na yung applied force natin. And it means that mag-occur na yung kinetic friction. Gagalaw na yung crate natin. Nagkakaroon na tayo ng motion. And therefore, meron na tayong acceleration to be solved later. Gagamitin na natin sa value ng force of friction natin ngayon is yung kinetic friction coefficient times the normal force. By substituting, we have 0.31 as a coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force na 93.20 newton. Force of friction now is equal to 29.892 newton. Ito na yung magiging sagot natin as the force of friction. To solve for the acceleration naman, by second law of motion, at x, this is equal to mass times the acceleration. Again, meron na tayong acceleration kasi gumalaw na yung crate, hindi na zero. And by summation of forces, ang nag na forces are force of friction positive minus force applied na 55 newton. So, equate natin itong dalawa na to. Mass times the acceleration is equal to force of friction, yung kinetic, minus the force applied. Solving for the acceleration, we divide both sides by the mass. Acceleration is equal to, ang force of friction natin is 29.892 newton minus the force applied, we have 55 newton divided by 9.5 kilograms. Ang acceleration natin ngayon is equal to negative 2.643 meters per second square. Again, naging negative siya kasi ang motion natin is papunta dito. This is the acceleration. Ang kinoconsider natin na positive is yung right side. So, pwede natin din siyang isulat as 2.643 meters per second square to the left. So, this is the answers for letter D. Ang force of friction natin is 29.892. Again, nag-occur na dito yung kinetic friction. And therefore, meron na tayong acceleration that has the magnitude of 2.643 meters per second square moving to the left. So, this is example number 1. Example number 2. How much force is needed to keep a 300 kilogram box moving at constant velocity on a level floor? Use 0.28 for the coefficient of kinetic friction and 0.33 for the coefficient of static friction. So we draw first again the free body diagram. Say this is the box, this is the weight, and this is the normal force. Say this is the applied force. Yung applied force ang inhanap dito sa problem na to. Gaano raw kalaking force ang kailangan para may push yung 300 kg box at a constant velocity. So, this is the unknown. And of course, nandito yung ating force of friction. So, sa free body diagram natin, this is the normal force. This is the weight. This is the force of friction. And this is the applied force, the unknown force. Ang assumption sulit natin sa positive is right and the upward. To solve for the applied force, again, we need to solve first for the normal force. Sa so, y component natin, wala ulit siyang motion vertically. Therefore, zero acceleration. So, by summation of forces, we only have positive normal force minus the weight. This is zero. Normal force natin is directly equal sa weight, which is mass times the gravity. Ang mass natin is 300 kilogram box times 9.81 meters per second square. Normal force is equal to 2,943 newton. Take note that according to the problem, ang sabi dito is constant velocity. Ngayon, i-consider na natin yung x component. Pag sinabi natin constant velocity, there is no acceleration kasi walang change of velocity. So by second law of motion at x, this is also zero. Kasi, ang inanap sa atin is yung force na kailangan to push the 300 kg box at a constant velocity. So, by summation of forces, ang nag lang sa 
x component natin is yung force of friction na kinukonsider natin as the positive force minus the force applied. Again, this is zero. There is no acceleration kasi constant velocity yung pinag-uusapan natin. Force applied is directly equal to the force of friction. Force applied, again, since may motion na pinag-uusapan natin, ang gagamitin natin na friction is yung coefficient of kinetic friction. Kinetic friction yung mag-occur sa problem na to. So we have coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Force applied is equal to ang kinetic ang coefficient of kinetic friction natin is equal to 0.28 times the normal force na 2943 newton. And by calculating the applied force is now equal to 824.04 newton. So this is the force na kailangan natin para mag-continue yung 300 kg box kapag move niya at a constant velocity. And this is example number 2. Example number 3. The hockey puck struck by a stick is given an initial speed of 20 meters per second on a frozen pond. The puck remains on the ice and slides 120 meters, slowing down steadily until it comes to rest. Determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the ice. So according to the problem, yung puck daw ay nag-slow down steadily. Ibig sabihin that yung acceleration is constant. Now in order to find the coefficient of kinetic friction, kakailanganin natin yung summation of forces and yung second law of motion. Kaya lang, sa second law of motion natin is we need an acceleration. Dahil nga, unang-una, meron ditong motion. Nag-start siya from 20 meters per second hanggang sa huminto siya into final velocity of zero. To solve for the acceleration, gagamit tayo ng equation from kinematics which is V square equals V sub O square plus 2A X minus X sub O. So, i-consider muna natin yung hockey puck natin. This is the weight and this is the normal force. And ito naman yung ating force of friction. Yung motion natin is papunta dito. So, wala tayong applied force. In this problem, i-consider na natin agad yung object na gumagalaw. Wala nang attach na applied force. Kaya nga, meron agad tayong initial speed na 20 meters per second hanggang sa huminto siya. And say from here, say ito yung 120 meters, yung final velocity niya dito is 0 and yung initial velocity niya dito is 20 meters per second. Dito siya sa point na to nag-stop. This is the x sub o which is 0 and this is the x naman as 120 meters, the final position ng hockey puck. So we solve first for the acceleration. Again, the final velocity is 0. We have given an initial velocity. Ang initial position natin is 0. Ang matitira lang sa atin is 0 equals V sub O square plus 2AX. Ang kailangan natin is the acceleration na magagamit natin mamaya sa Newton's second law of motion. So, ilipat natin sa kabilang equation. This is negative 2AX equals V sub O squared. We divide both sides by negative 2X para makancel. Cancel. Ang matitira sa atin is A equals V sub O square over negative 2X. Ang V sub O natin is equal to 20 meters per second quantity square minus 2 times the final position which is 120 meters. Acceleration is equal to negative 1.67 meters per second square. Ito yung gagamitin natin sa Newton's second law of motion. Now, ay consider natin na motion is the horizontal. Summation of Fx or the net force is equal to by second law of motion mass times the acceleration na na-solve natin ito siya. And by summation of forces at x, we have only one force na nag-act sa horizontal natin which is yung force of friction and this is negative. Assuming na ito ulit yung ating positive sides. Now, sa nakuha natin, we have a negative acceleration. Negative kasi, nagde-decelerate na siya, nag-start siya from 20 meters per second, bumagal siya hanggang maging zero velocity na, kaya naging negative deceleration siya. Since this is equal, we have here mass times the acceleration equals negative force of friction. 
Ang kailangan natin is yung coefficient of kinetic friction. Therefore, we need to solve pa yung normal force sa y component. This is at x component. At y component, wala tayong motion sa vertical. Therefore, we have zero acceleration. By second law of motion, mass times the acceleration y, this is zero. By summation of forces at y, zero ito. We have normal force positive minus the weight of the hockey puck or the object. Ang normal force natin is equal to weight. And ang weight natin is mass times gravity. So, ito yung ating value ng normal force. Lipat na ulit tayo dito sa equation na to. Mass times the acceleration is equal to negative. Ang equation ng force of friction natin, since nasa motion tayo, kinetic friction, this is coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Lipat na tayo dito. Again, this is mass times the acceleration. Ito yung acceleration na yan. Equals negative coefficient of kinetic friction. Ang normal force natin is equal to mass times gravity. So, pwede na natin i-cancel sa equation na to yung mass. Ang isasolve lang natin is yung coefficient of friction. We divide both sides by negative gravity. Para makancel yung negative, cancel yung gravity. Coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to acceleration over negative gravity. Ang acceleration natin is equal to negative 1.67 meters per second squared divided by negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Cancel yung meter per second squared. Unang-una kasi wala naman tayong unit for the coefficient of friction, static or kinetic. By calculating, ang coefficient of kinetic friction natin is equal to 0.170. So, notice how the problem breaks into three parts. Una-una, yung solution natin using the kinematics. Pangalawa, yung Newton's second law in the x direction. And then, ginamit din natin yung Newton's second law sa y direction. So, this is example number three.